Welcome into the 541 Fisherman YouTube channel, everybody. Obviously, you guys clicked on this video because you guys want to know the three best setups to catch spring Chinook salmon. Now, either you guys clicked on this video because it is pre Chinook salmon season, like spring Chinook season, which is currently the time when I'm filming this video, or it is already Chinook season and you guys just found about spring Chinook salmon. Now, spring Chinook salmon are highly sought after and in the Pacific Northwest, they are considered to be one of the best eating salmon due to their high fat content. So it's not shocking that you guys wanna learn how to catch them. So on today's episode, like I said, I'm gonna be showing you guys the three best methods to catch these spring Chinook salmon. With the first two setups that I am gonna show you guys, they're not, I don't really need to in depth show you. I'm basically gonna show you the two like best lures that I would use. But then later on in the episode, there is going to be a in depth how to set up a bobber setup. Like, so if you wanna float a jig, you wanna float bait, anything like that, there will be an in-depth part of that in the video. Then at the very end of the video, there is going to be several Spring Chinook catches just to prove to you guys that these methods that I'm gonna show you guys right now are going to work. Now, before I show you guys these methods, I just wanna tell you guys about my steelhead gear code. 541STLHD saves you guys 15% off of your entire purchase. As you guys can see back here behind me, I have steelhead gear flags, I wear steelhead gear, in pretty much every single clip that you guys are about to see i have steelhead gear on it is what i love to wear when i'm out fishing they make absolutely amazing products there will be a link down in the description if you guys would like to go buy some steelhead gear it supports me and it supports steelhead gear so let's go ahead and jump into the like fishing lures that i would recommend you guys to use for spring chinook salmon now the first one actually i have some right here with me um it is just going to be a spinner now this spinner that i'm actually going to take out of the package and show you guys this is my own custom 541 fisherman steelhead slammer lure it is an absolutely amazing color it is designed for like pretty much every species but i would recommend it a hundred percent for salmon and steelhead and trout over anything it is designed with the thought of it looking kind of like a little minnow. Like when you're going out trolling and stuff like that and you're trolling herring, they're very blue, purple, like they have that weird sheen going on to them. So like I have here, it has the purple sheen on it and then it has the chrome blade there. And this is the bigger salmon size, but these will be linked down in the description. There will be, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of goodness. Yeah, I hate this camera. It just, I don't even know what we were saying. It just aired out. But anyways, yeah, this is the 541 color that is on the website. They have all different kinds of colors, all different sizes. This is the bigger size that I would recommend throwing. Uh, I believe it's a five is what they would classify this as. But yeah, this one is probably the best one that I would recommend you guys to buy. That's kind of why I make it. This is literally the only color I throw. Next thing that we are gonna be talking about is twitching jigs. Now, you wanna make sure that you check your local rules and regulations to show that you, like to make sure that you are able to use twitching jigs. Now, I actually don't have any in my possession right now. They're out in the garage and I don't feel like walking out to get them. So we're just gonna pop them up on the screen right now. Um, basically what's popping up is like just images of twitching jigs. Uh, this is what I would recommend using. I would go, if I was you guys, I actually don't have any in-depth twitching videos, but after you guys watch this video, go look up like an in-depth video on how to use twitching jigs. Cause there's a lot of other people that made pretty good in-depth videos on how to do it. That's how I learned how to do it. And the last thing that I'm gonna be showing you guys is the in-depth bobber setup. Pretty much, I did this a little while ago uh, outside and it you know it looks pretty good it's exactly what you guys need to do it's super in depth but one thing I'm gonna mention to you guys is I didn't show you guys how to tie up the jig or anything like that on the bobber now instead of basically having like you know the hook the, with the bait loop on it you would just have a jig or you know whatever or you'd have a bead or something like that it pretty much is the same exact thing but just envision instead of having a hook with a bait loop you have a jig or like I said a bead so let's go ahead and roll into that. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys learned something from this video. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our, this is our 40 pound line. You guys can see that there. We're gonna set this down really quick and I'm gonna show you guys just really quick on how to like trim these bead stops to make them bobber stops. Um, a big pack of these, you get like, 
think it's like a 40 pack is like eight dollars which is pretty fair because it's like four dollars for a 10 pack of bobber stops what you gotta do is take your handy dandy braid scissors and if you can pick that up on the end of that thing there there's the little lip where your bead goes i'm sure if you know what these are then you know if you don't there's a little stopper on there's a little like lip on the end of that there you're going to take your scissors go just inside of that lip don't squeeze harder you'll cut the little metal wire that's in there squeeze it just a little bit and just pierce just barely pierce that rubber take your hand hold the flat side take your other hand grab that little lip and just give it a pull okay so now you are left with that little bobber stop now that is what you originally had all right so now that you've taken you've trimmed the little end off your uh, t-stop there you're gonna go ahead and take your braid doesn't matter what size you use i say 40 just because that's personally what i use now you can use whatever you want you're gonna take it and on the end of that little wire there's a little hole you're gonna put that braid right through the hole you're gonna take it like the end that you stuck through you can see it's through there you're gonna take it and just kind of pinch it back against itself there you're gonna take hold it between your fingers grab your stop and then pull 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 it on your line slide it and what it does is it pops it off now you have that little bobber stop on your line and it works perfect and they're really really hard to slide so what happens with the like little rubber ones that you can buy like the bomac ones um they're a lot thicker diameter so they're really hard on your eyelets on your rod and they slide super easy up and down your line uh you find like with the cheap amazon ones and stuff they rip and they slide easy up and down your line i never have any problems with these and i've bought one pack of t-stops like three years ago and i still have all of them next thing you're gonna do is those little beads that i showed you guys you're gonna take one of them here out of your little box or wherever you have it little green bead guy there and you're gonna just put it through your line like so so i threaded that there on my line you're just gonna let it fall to your bobber stop you're gonna take your handy dandy corky uh preferably something bright like i just have a watermelon corky any color works any size works i like the bigger the better you're gonna take that you're just gonna put the line through the corky like you did with that bead so it's on your line let it fall to your bobber stop you're now gonna take your float whatever kind of float you have uh this is personally this is a three quarter ounce float which i'll show you guys why i have a three quarter ounce float you're gonna take your line and what i personally do is i do the little secret where you put your line in and then you kind of hold a loop and you suck on the end of it and it comes through because sometimes when your line's wet it gets stuck in there and it's just kind of hard to get through now that you have your float on you have your bobber stop bead corky float you're now going to take another bead because what's going to happen is that bobber is going to slide down and try to go over your knot but if there's another little bead in between your knot and that swivel and your bobber i guess it won't get stuck and it'll just you know freely slide so we have that bobber drop it down or you have the bead drop it down to the bobber you're going to now take one of your little three-way swivel guys and if you guys want to check that out really quick it has two tie-ins and then just a little snap swivel on the end of it which makes it super easy for ch in, you know changing in and out weights you're going to then take that three-way swivel tie it onto your 40 pound braid or whatever pound braid you have uh, i personally do eight wraps like this i take that tag or my end there i go through the loop and i'm pinching that line still with my finger and i've created another loop i'm going to go back through grab it and what i like to do is i like to pull and actually cinch that loop and then pull and it will slide right down and create a perfect knot go ahead and trim your tag end off set it in your box so you don't litter and then i'll go ahead and show you guys my egg loop really quick and then we'll go ahead and tie it on okay guys so i've cut like roughly like probably a 24 to 36 inch liter uh this is that 30 pound fluorocarbon that i showed you guys earlier in the video i have my two watt gamagatsu octopus hook um in red i personally like red for you know, when i'm throwing eggs i'm gonna take my finger and i'm gonna grab kind of near the end of that line and then you're gonna take your hook and hold it in your opposite hand and you're gonna put it point side down like that and you're gonna take the line 
and you're gonna go through that eyelet. You're gonna then grab the eyelet with the hand that you just threaded the line through with, take the other hand and take that line and you're gonna just grab it while grabbing the shank of your hook and you're gonna pinch it so you can hold it there. Take your other hand again and that line that's going through your eyelet, you're gonna take it and you're gonna go against, back against that eyelet and do wraps. You're gonna wrap it, that's one, two, three, four, five. You're gonna then take it with your two fingers and pinch it. Now you can pinch it however you want, whatever works best for you, this is what works for me. You're gonna take that other end of your line that you're holding with your hand. You're gonna take it and you're gonna go back through the eyelet, but the opposite direction of where you first went through. You're gonna take and you're gonna switch that line that you were holding with your hand, drop it, and just like you did when you first threaded that line through, you're gonna grab it with your hand and you're gonna pinch that little tag that you put through and that new line with your hand again while holding tension on this. This is the line that we just were wrapping. You're gonna now take it and do double the amount of wraps. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We do five more because that's what we initially did. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, Five. That makes 10 total. Now I don't recommend doing this, but grab it with your teeth, pull it through just a little bit, and then just go ahead and pull that line through. Sometimes it gets a little jumbled up on itself just because it's such big line and it kind of gets kinked, but you're gonna go ahead and just pull that line through, keep pulling, and then you're gonna get it to your loop. And just pull as hard as you can and it's gonna cinch up. And now you've created you can take your line and push it back through. You've created an egg loop. You're just gonna go ahead and take, there's that little tag end right there that you are pinching and you're just gonna take it and just nip it off with some scissors. You're now gonna go ahead and take this little egg loop that you created. You're gonna take your swivel and your whole bobber setup that you tied on your main line off your rod and you're gonna go on that other opposite end of that. You're gonna put it through. And then for this, I do the same knot I did for the braid except when I put my thumb, I like to put my thumb through. It just helps create that loop. I'm only gonna do four. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna then take that end. I'm gonna put it through. Then I'm gonna take it, grab it, and put it back through the loop, just like I did with my braid. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it somewhat tight like this. Wet my knot, wet my line, and then cinch it right down. And you can see, as I'm pulling it, it creates a perfect knot every single time. You're gonna take your tag end, trim it off, put it in the box so you're not littering. You're gonna do just a quick recap of everything. Got your bobber stop, bead, corky, bobber, bead, swivel, leader down to my egg loop. You're now gonna use that little swivel there. Take your three quarter ounce Dave's Tingle free weight. You're gonna pop open that little snap bam you're gonna slide it through that loop close it up and that's it that literally is a bobber and egg setup so when it's floating it's gonna look like this and then your egg loop is gonna be suspended down and you're gonna have you know, your big glob of eggs like this floating through the river now I personally like doing it this way um, you can use little inline leads like this uh, with a swivel on each end instead of doing it that way but what happens with these is they get hung up in the rocks a lot more. Um, and obviously it has the name, you know, it's a Dave's Tingle Free. And so when this is sliding through the rocks, it likes to slide through better. If I accidentally find a big boulder in the middle of a run, you know, that maybe I didn't know was there or I'm on a river I haven't fished before and I'm not like 100% sure about how that drift is. So just kind of one more look here at our little bobber rig that we got. Got that hook looped down onto our rod. Got our 10 foot six rod and reel. Um, now, kind of with that, with that, uh, you don't need a 10 foot six rod. That's just my own personal preference. Um, I would definitely say for float fishing, use anything that's over eight foot six. Um, it's just gonna help. So when you're sitting there, you know, and you're fishing out in that drift, you're gonna be able to lift that rod and mend that line. You know, roll that line so it's, I guess, like, what would that be? Like per perpendicular or whatever, just in a line with you to that bobber, so you don't have this big giant loop downriver or for some reason a big giant loop up river so when your bobber goes down you can give that nice straight hook set 
um, that's why I like a really long rod. So I'm literally, I'm like, when my arm's in the air, it's only like seven feet tall. But now I just added a whole nother, like nine feet to my rod. So I'm like 15 feet in the air and I can go like this and mend my line all the way across the river. Now, if I only have an eight foot six rod, I just lost two whole feet of mending ability. Um, that's just my own personal preference. I hope that you guys enjoyed that little setup on how to set up, you know, the bobber for salmon fishing. Now, these clips that I'm going to show you guys are all, they're all spring chinook salmon. It's just some trip that we went on last year with me and my friends, and we had an absolutely amazing time. We caught a bunch of fish. The area we're fishing is actually bobber fishing only, so that's why you guys are only seeing bobber fishing clips. Do have other videos of me catching, you know, springers on twitching jigs and on spinners, but I did not want to put them in this video because it would make the video like 40 minutes long and it's already being drug out long enough. So thank you guys for watching. I hopefully you guys enjoy these little clips of the fish fighting and uh, we'll see you guys after that. There he is, yeah. What is it? Oh, it's a nook. <laughs> Finally. It might be a, just a jack. It's not fighting very hard. I don't know. It's fighting weird, dude. There it goes. God. It was fighting weird, dude. It was like it, I could just pull it right in. It was doing nothing. Finally, dude. I saw it tick and I was like, oh, there it is. It's going way up there. It's all the way up by those other people's bobbers. Dude, I know. Yeah, this thing's going back to spawning grounds. Dude, one just jumped on my line. Goodness. Come on. I don't like come back. He's right here. Yeah, he's right here. Yeah, I know. It feels like it's hooked pretty good. Okay. All right, Josh. Yeah, let's have... No, 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 no. Off the rocks, get off the rocks. Goodness. I can't tell if it's dark or not. I haven't seen it yet. Well, I can't see it. It ate it so sick too. Yeah, it was a cool bobber down. It was like, it was like, oh God, that's gotta be a fish. And then I just, I just swung. Okay. Come on, baby. I know, I'm trying to fight this fish. I just, I have 10, so it's hard. It's a, it's a decent one, it looks like. What? Well, dude, it was coming right at me. It like didn't even fight. He's coming up right now. He's going right for that rock. You want to go yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying. He's just kicking my ass. Ooh, he's on there. Something down there. Dude. I can turn him towards but he's in the face. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be so stoked if it's just a nice fish. Chromus bar. Yeah, I haven't seen it. And, uh, it's also very dark. Basically just set the net in the water and I'll just kinda head him up in there. Let's 
Let's see him. Let's see him. Let's see him. Oh, it's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Yeah, it's a bright fish. It's a nice bright fish. I just saw him come up right by the surface and kick. And it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good fish. Like when you bunk? Yeah. <laughs> What? I know, dude. I hate fighting them for this long. I can't move him, though. He's just a good fish. Dude, the GoPro probably can't see any of this. No. <laughs> it's so dark. There's, he's rolling down like crazy. Oh, Goodness. <laughs> it's a nice fish, too. It's pretty heavy. And you're like, what is it doing? Is it a jet? <laughs> well, dude, it didn't do anything. It just kind of came into me like a cutthroat. <laughs> it literally fought as hard as those cutthroat I caught up there like last trip. You feel good now, though? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a nice bright fish. I, it's one of the freshies that just we came in. a lot of fish guys in Devin's family were real long. Finally, dude. We're going to have shredding tomorrow morning, though. I hope so. He's yeah. close. Is it darky? It looks pretty dark. Does it? Yeah. Dude, I thought it was chrome. I mean, if it's a hen, it's gonna die. <laughs> People are gonna be upset at me, but. We got 30 minutes. Got him? Fuck, oh, dude, that could be mine. That was, that was a chroma, bro. That was chrome. Oh, here, 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 here. It's actually not a bad fish. Oh, dude, that's a chrome fish, Devin. That's what I said. Hey, get him in the get him in the He's Scoop him. Is he in? Scoop all the way in. Get a bit. <laughs> is it native? It's a native. Oh my god, know. it's got a native. <laughs> dang it. Dang it, dang it. All right. That's a huge one, though. That is pretty big. Goodness. All right, guys. Here's that Chinook I just caught. You <laughs> see, it's got the big old rudder on the back. So we gotta uh, let this guy go quick so Josh can get, a, get some fishing in before last light. We have like half an hour left till legal fishing light ends. Oh, there he goes. You guys can't see, but he just took off. Hey, hold on. Bring that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take this one home, Kevin. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm waiting. <laughs> oh, God. That's a chromer. Oh, God. Lift, lift, lift. <laughs> Is it a hatchery? <laughs> it's a clipper. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. <laughs> now you can take pictures with two of them. I know, right? Wait, oh no, you can't. You didn't kill the other fish. That's a oh. buck. Is it a buck? Yeah, it's a buck? Why does it look like? Look at its gut, though. I hope you guys enjoyed those little clips of me and my friends catching some chrome, beautiful spring chinook salmon. I just want to say thank you guys for watching this episode. I appreciate all the love and support. You guys are one of the best communities that I have found on YouTube and the support that you guys give me is absolutely amazing. So with that, uh, just leave you guys with a piece of positivity. Definitely when you guys go out and go fishing, it's not always just about catching the fish. You guys want to really take in the whole scenery of all of it. The fish is just a bonus. When you go out and you don't catch a fish, it's not always a bad thing because you guys got to experience the nature, the wildlife, the drive, everything. And that's the positive part about all of it. The fish is just a bonus and that is like an addition onto the trip. So that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. Make sure that uh, you guys do possibly think about leaving a thumbs up. Think about subscribing if you haven't. Maybe turn on the little notification bell so you don't miss any Spring Chinook Salmon videos that I will be posting. And uh, stay fishy everybody. We'll see you guys' faces on the next fishing adventure.